Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome, my friends. This is the Divine Phoenix Rising Tarot. And hey, I'm Zachary. Thank you guys for joining me here and welcome to my table. So this is your new moon reading here for uh, the new moon in Cancer coming up. Um, I'm uploading this here on the 4th. So tomorrow we have the new moon um, or the 6th, depending on where you are here in the world. I did get a few messages here in meditation and pulled some oracle cards. I'm being told there are some more we're going to pull here as we go and then into the tarot messages, okay? So let's get into what's going on here. What is going on? So this new moon in Cancer, happy new moon, is about inner contemplation, looking at um, many of the different things that are going on with the self and uh, the way that we process information, the way that we uh, allow things to come into our life and, and how we ascribe meaning to uh, to those things as well, okay? So it seems like this is a good, well, this is a good opportunity to address or to change some of the ways that you are approaching life starting from the inside, okay? So the messages that came through here in meditation to start with, I was told dawn is breaking and so is the curse. So I feel like that sounds like the, the term curse, I feel like is, um, mm, well, in and of itself has, is loaded, right? Um, it can mean many different things to different people. But when that came through, I was like, mm, okay, I, curse is not really the word that I want to be sharing here, but I feel like it's important. The effect is important for some reason. What is coming through on that, especially with this inner contemplation with this new moon, um, there is a call to responsibility towards ourselves in what it is that we accept as far as curses go. A curse can be like, what is a curse? Um, this could be something that you could look at it like lineage wise in your family. Oh, it's a family curse, you know, or we've been cursed or somebody cursed you by, um, actively, you know, maybe putting a spell or magic together to curse you uh, to things like the evil eye, um, which is like inadvertent cursing, essentially. And a curse, really, um, its effect on us is only really possible if we allow that to be possible. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't, nobody has the ability to control another person, period. Okay. Um, so that that is coming through as something very important for me to express. If you feel that you've been cursed, whether it's your family, yourself, because of anything, the message that's coming through here right now is to pay attention to the role that you're playing in how you're accepting a curse. Okay? Um, I know that might be a tricky one for for some of you to look at or to accept. But um, I'm here to help, okay? I want things to improve for you individually, for us collectively. Um, and I'm not here to, although I want, you know, everybody to feel good, I'm not going to lie to you either, all right? This is, there is a lot of, I just got finished doing Aries as well, and there was a lot of messages coming through about accountability, self-accountability. What role are we playing in the projection of our own life and because of that the projection of the life that we're living collectively well we have a lot of power in that so great time here you guys to start examining what you're allowing okay um and then moving into allowing here allowing the fringe is something that came through which i thought was kind of funny um fringe uh, as someone who used to do hair could be like your fringe your bangs Allow, so maybe some of you need a bang trim. I don't know. Maybe some of you are thinking about doing those, uh, those miniature bangs or, or uh, a nice, nice curtain bang. I don't know. What it made me think of really, though, was um, fringe information or something that's on the outskirts, something that's on the outside, something that's on the fringe. Allowing something that maybe you've pushed to the fringe of your own experience to come back into active participation or focus even maybe this could be something that uh, a skill a talent a hobby something about yourself uh, I do kind of get that this may maybe is a component that has been pushed to the shadow 
the fringe to the outside of your experience, um, allowing that to actually be a part of your life. And I think um, like in terms of the curse here, if this is you that feel that you have been cursed, the fringe in this situation would be um, your power. <laughs> if you are allowing a curse to dominate your life, no matter where it's come from, pulling the, your own power and protection back from the fringe because that's what you've done if you have if you are feeling that you're under the effects of a curse, okay? You are pushing your own power to the side and allowing somebody else to be more powerful than you. And that simply isn't true. It's just not, okay? And I feel I feel like someone's pissed off about that. I don't really care. <laughs> Honestly, um, I'm not here to compare power, okay? Because that's not really what we're doing here. Um, that is a trap of the ego, and I'm, I'm working to help us out of that, right? The messages that are coming through are to step away from this game, okay? Remember how powerful you are. Remember, Simba, you must come back and take care of your own domain. Push out the, the invaders here, okay? So the next thing that came through was succulent surprise. Ooh, succulent surprise. And the dam is breaking. Um, I wasn't quite sure what that meant, but then I was shown that scene in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? where um, the, dam, the dam is broken, like they're flooding the valley or whatever, uh, as he's trying to get this ring, the family ring. Um, so what, what waits at the bottom is what came through here. I feel like whatever this dam is, emotion, um, this could be, this could be your own restriction of, of power. Like I said, your own power, that dam breaking is this release. I'm seeing like a boil being popped, something that that pressure needs to be released. And once that's gone, once that water that has been causing pressure and weight, uh, is gone. What is at the bottom is able to be seen. And there are treasures down there, a succulent surprise. And I feel like um, this is just more to do with your own power. Like I said, back to the curse thing, if this is you specifically, again, there is a portion of allowing that weight to crush you. So this dam is breaking. There is something about the new moon cycle here that is allowing that pressure to be relieved. Are you going to rebuild the dam and allow the pressure to build again? Or are you going to start looking around and seeing what it really is here at the bottom? What succulent surprise is waiting for you? And we'll get into that a little bit more. The next thing that came through was slippery slope, slippery slope and standing still. And it was really weird how it came through uh, because they were overlaid, like it was said at the same time. And I asked my team to repeat that and they said it exactly the same, the same way. Um, so very weird. Uh, the next thing that came through on that was your choices in behavior. So is this a slippery slope or are you standing still? And the way I take that is like, is there backsliding? Is there movement that you, uh, maybe don't want actually to participate in or to have happen? Or are you standing solid? Are you feeling grounded? Are you feeling secure? Those motions, either one of them are possible and they are both fully within your control. This is your choice, and the choice comes down to your behavior. How are you deciding to behave, to act? Back to the curse thing, you know, as an example, is it in your behavior to give your power away to others, to allow others to take that power from you? I don't know. Exam let's examine it, right? This was weird, okay? It came through, um, and I, <laughs> Senegal, uh, and then hope came through and in meditation, I, I knew I was going to go take a look at this, examine this online, see what's going on with Senegal. Uh, I honestly couldn't find anything, so I don't know. I don't know, but there you go. Senegal and hope. Maybe, I don't know. I'm going to be paying attention here in the future seeing maybe some of you know something that's going on that I don't, but um, that did come through. I was also given the numbers 23, 7, and 14. So the first thing that popped up, and those numbers may have something to do with you in particular, but was like as a date, July 14th of last year. Uh, maybe something was going on around that time or on that date. Anyway, 
let's get into it here. So, um, there's a lot of channeled messages, but it's kind of how these collective messages go. So in the uh, Wild Unknown archetype deck is what I was led to use here. You guys got, or we got, the mentor, the mentor, the vessel, and the self. Hey! <laughs> uh, I definitely enjoy how the message is tying together here so far. <clears throat> so let's talk about these here with the mentor. The mentor is somebody who, like uh, the book says, teacher, sage, guru. This is somebody who knows when to give, when not to give for the, for the betterment of the student. The things that really stood out to me about this were remaining humble. Also remembering that maybe you are a mentor or you're in a position of instruction or mentoring others in your life, remembering that you are also still a student no matter what level of teaching you do here. Maybe you're another reader on, on YouTube here, you know, uh, or a school teacher. There's a request here to remember to be humble. If you are slipping, if this is you as an archetype, if there's ever a time where you're slipping into feeling like you, like you are giving an enlightened message from the self rather than whatever the divine, God, universe, source, there's a problem. That's where this starts to slip into the shadow. So I just feel like there's a reminder to um, keep your own ego in check. No matter whether you are teaching somebody or you're learning yourself. There's just a, a reminder to stay humble. Okay, you guys. The vessel coming through here next. This is um, the body, the container, the cup. The part that stood out to me was... What is, what is holding you together? So the book talks about um, you examining the vessel here, whatever the vessel is. Is it broken? Is it solid? Does it need to be fixed? Is there a hole? Is it time for a new vessel? And it doesn't have to, you know, literally be your body here. This is just, I'm saying that you need a new body. Um, what is coming through on that is a need to examine the care that you're putting into your vessel, what is holding information, what is holding spiritual information, energy. Is your cup full? Is it empty? Is it broken? Is it gone? Somebody steal it, right? Um, this process, I feel like also requires, so the mentor and student energy, I feel like is coming through for the self, through the self, not necessarily instructing other people, but this teacher-student relationship that's inside of the self. If the vessel, the body, is not in a state of enough health that it can go through the process of learning or teaching, then I feel like there is a, a block here, okay? So there's a request to take care of the vessel too. Inside and out, inside and out. And speaking of inside, the self. So the self coming through here. This is the soul, the witness, the watcher. There is a request in this archetype to step into witness consciousness. So the self, the book talks about um, all of the components. Like the self does not restrict components of its own self. It does not sequester components of the self to the fringe back to the channeled messages there. Um, there is a request for unity within the self that's coming through here. Ego, care, what level is your ego playing in your story at this time? How are you caring for your vessel? And are you, and I think this is why ego is important. Ego needs to be kept in check because it's the ego that is, is trying to divide the self. Okay, and the more that the self becomes divided, the more that we all become divided. And then we're going to have a bad time. <laughs> so um, I like this message so far, you guys. We're talking about coming into um, congruency, into cohesion with ourselves and, and with others. So I do feel there is a call to pull a couple other cards here, and then we'll get into the tarot messages. 
So Urban Crow Oracle is what we're going to start with. I feel like there's a couple cards that want to come out here. Spirit for the Collective. For the New Moon. Ooh, gifts. I love that. Um, I feel like this is where, like, with ego coming in here, too, and trickery. <laughs> we'll talk about this, because that's... Of course that came through. Um, when I... <laughs> When I was getting this together before filming, there was some trickster energy that was coming through. And I had to continue to cleanse the space and to, um, to push it away from the message because it didn't feel like there was something um, malevolent about it. It just felt like it was trying to be seen. And I do feel like this is a component of the self. Maybe there is a need to lean into more play. Um, but at the time, it was just like, now's not the time. <laughs> I'm trying to get this message figured out. So uh, interesting that trickery comes through here. I think that uh, this is a reminder that there are those components of ourself um, that exist too. That can be little tricksters, okay? Uh, not that it's not a bad energy, okay, as long as there's not bad intention or, or ill will that is desired with that kind of energy. Uh, it's more than okay. It's more than okay. Uh, I think about like Hermes, the Greek god, that that kind of trickster energy. It's it's necessary at times as well. So I feel like there is a need to allow that to be at the dinner table here, so to speak, as well, but to know when to use that energy and when not to. So gifts, with gifts coming through here as well. I feel like these, this is the, these, these are, all of those little baubles here. This is what is at the bottom of the, the lake there, the water. Once that dam breaks, once that pressure is released, I'm seeing this pearl being magnified here from the heart space as well. I feel like this is a time of um, growth, with gifts especially, psychic gifts and, and, and awareness. Because we all have the ability to tap into extrasensory things, okay? You are powerful here as well. Don't forget that. So I feel like um, I am getting this like, don't hide, don't hide your light under a bushel with this trickery there. The crow is putting this whatever coin underneath the leaf here, hiding it. I do feel like there's a request. Once you find these gifts, once you know what your gifts are, do not allow them, do not hide them. There's a reason why it's here, right? And it's not like you're not required to use your gifts for others at all times. You do get to decide, you know, when you want to use them for the greater good or for your greater good. But I'm 1818 18 on the timer. I'm just getting the message that it's important to um, not hide them away. They've been hidden for so long. Don't continue to push them down, okay? Let them be. Let them be in the light. So uh, Wild Unknown Animal Spirit Oracle here. I'm going to pull a couple cards and then we'll move into tarot. Any other messages here for the collective, please? <laughs> oh, I love it. Owl and Crow come through here and uh we have the symbology or symbolism here on the mentor with the owl that was standing out to me and then crows here obviously with the crow so crow here this is magical sight there's a need to um i feel like this is connecting to the message of the gifts here too there's a need to be ready to be ready for this magical sight this is where ego needs to not be involved once ego starts to come in between our gifts and the way that they are presenting in this reality, um, that's where it starts to slip into shadow. That's where it starts to become uh, twisted. Okay? So I feel like this is a reminder to be ready. This is happening. This energy is breaking. The dawn is breaking. The dam is breaking. This is happening. Be ready. Okay, just make sure that you are, get your vessel ready to go. Get ready to find these pearls, the gifts that are on the bottom there. With Owl here, this is um, um, like wisdom. I also get, because the Owl is the um, 
pet or, or totem of uh, the goddess Lakshmi as well. This abundance and gifts, treasure, is something that is coming through here pretty heavily, you guys. Okay, I'm excited. Let's get into the tarot then. I want to know, I want to know more about these gifts and treasures and things coming forward. So this is the untamed tarot I'm going to be working with here first. And then the wild unknown tarot we'll use for the second deck. So what do we have here, please, spirit, for the collective, for the new moon? Thanks for hanging in here, you guys. I know that one was a little bit. These collectives just tend to be a little bit longer. I don't know. I don't know. It takes time to be human. <laughs> strength here at the bottom. I do feel like this process, um, getting to that point of finding whatever these succulent surprises are, is going to require this. I mean, this is talking about the ego for me too. It's going to require a gentle hand, the higher experience overcoming or taking precedent over the lower animal impulses, including the ego. It's a reminder to let love win over hate. That was kind of something coming through with Aries too. Maybe you feel inclined to watch Aries. I don't know. But I'm going to do a full Celtic cross here, you guys. I'll get these all laid. So Ten of Pentacles crossed by the Hermit. Um, Seven of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles. Ten of Swords. Nine of Cups. Six of Cups. The Sun. Mm -hmm. Ace of Pentacles and the High Priestess. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Let's get into it. So main energy here, you guys have Ten of Pentacles. Um, love to see this. Everything that you could possibly want, right? Your ultimate material and spiritual abundance. Building and leaving a legacy. And this actually, this came through in Aries too. And it hadn't ever popped through before, but Utopia is what, like collective Utopia is what came through with this as well. So um, I feel like this is what we're moving towards, right? Or we're trying to. This is the start, this new moon here. There is a chance to uh, really dig into playing the part that we decided to play here and moving towards this, this beautiful community where we support each other. Not because we have to, you know, but because um, we get to, all right? Um, I feel like this is like, like a grand relief is what's coming through on this for me. I love that you guys being crossed here by the hermit, some Virgo energy here. This is drawing me back to, so like the first step here to get to that legacy, that utopia, whatever it is that you're working towards personally. And we all are towards collectively our ascension starts with the self. The hermit is about solitude, isolation. I'm being brought back to these gifts here too. The answers being in, inside of us, right? Inside. I feel like there's a lot of reaching outside of us for direction, for answers. And sometimes we do need help but we were all put here with a blueprint, with information, with ways to access information as well outside of ourselves. It's more than okay, and even as an example here on YouTube, to watch others um, read, to channel. There are, yes, varying levels of skill. There are some people that may be better at some other things than others, but we can all tap into truth no matter who you are. So it's more than okay to seek validation in something that you're feeling. But what I'm getting is kind of like, there's a request here to step away from rebuking your own ability to recognize truth, to hear truth, to feel truth. Okay. Can we get some uh, clarification there on that? The hermit and the 10 of pentacles, please spirit. Daughter of Cups, Page of Cups here. So this is um, that process of like grounding, grounding something into this reality, something that you want to be, this collective experience. There's a need to take steps to make that a reality, to make that real, possible. 
And to watch, there's that overwhelm of emotion that comes with that too. Um, I feel like that's like the trigger for the ego. When, when we feel overwhelmed, maybe we are receiving messages. Maybe we are receiving truth. And we're not in a place where um, stress-wise, you know, we can handle that. I think that's why the self and the vessel are coming through here as a reminder. It's so important to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of others too, as needed. Getting ready to play your part, you guys, is what's coming through here. Yes, I'm here for that. I am here for that. So what's known here at this time? We have seven of pentacles. Um, this process of honing skill, a need to hone skills, being patient to see the results of something, somewhere we've planted seeds. Um, I do feel also an encouragement to step away from focus on loss. Whatever is lost will eventually be found, right? Maybe not in this lifetime, but there is an illusion, I feel, towards loss. In this form, it feel it can feel permanent. I just am getting um, getting a request to not get lost in that. That can that could be the ego playing games with you as well. Um, but honing the skill, honing skills. I feel like you guys have been putting work into your vessel. Have been putting work into yourself, recognizing that maybe um, you know whether it's tarot, whether it's uh, honing skills with channeling or empathy or any clear abilities. I, I just feel like you've been hearing the call for a while and you have been working on that. I feel that there's an encourage, there's an encouragement to continue down that road. Okay. And to not, not let other people, not let other people, um, make you feel like you don't belong in that community. <laughs> That spiritual community, that spiritual community is all of us. We all have a spiritual component. We all have a spirit. We are all a part of that community. The community. So Seven of Swords comes out here to clarify the Seven of Pentacles. Um, sneaky theft, betrayal kind of energy. This card in particular that Fox is sitting on that sword. This is, I'm brought back to like, don't hide your light under a bushel. Like I was just saying there. Do not, do not allow anybody to make you feel less than ever, but especially topic here in a spiritual sense. If there is somebody in your life and you're watching on YouTube here that you encounter ever that is speaking um, a reality where you are not as good as them or they know better than you, um, including if that's your narrative too, if you're allowing back to giving power away, okay? If you're allowing other people to be more knowledge, like they're gonna be people who are more knowledgeable, but um, to have more power than you. If you're putting people on a pedestal or if they're putting themselves on a pedestal, that's what I'm getting is, is to like, let's stop doing that, okay? Again, it's more than okay to ask for help from people or to gather help from people as an example again here on YouTube more than okay but if you're leaning into other people being the mouthpiece for your truth or for truth in general at all times that's that's your slippery slope right slippery slope versus standing still so this is your reminder here you know this I feel like um, quit hiding your own energy Stay safe, of course. We're not just giving energy to everybody all the time, but um, you're a badass too, okay? And you have a direct connection to the divine just like all of us. So don't get, give that power away. Don't continue to give that power away. What's sensed here at this time, you guys, we have Four of Pentacles. So Four of Pentacles is um, I'm like security, stability. It can be hanging on to those things that make us feel safe or secure a request to kind of go with the flow a little bit more what we are trying to hang on to too tightly as far as safety or security goes may actually be providing less 
safety or security for us. Um, freedom and flow is what's coming through here on this. Can we get some more information on that, please, Spirit? Well, there it goes. <laughs> One second. Father of Cups here. So King of Cups. Um, emotional sobriety, interesting. Emotional control comes through here, staying centered. Staying calm, collected in a, a storm of emotion around you. Um, I'm getting this feeling of, like things are crazy right now, right? They're crazy everywhere. If we allow ourselves to be constantly affected by what is going on around us or like as an example what's coming through is um maybe you're somebody who watches the news from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep that is 100 percent guaranteed affecting how you feel secure or safe most news outlets are literally psychologically designed to evoke fear that's the goal because fear sells Um, take that into consideration. Give yourself moments where you are taking your vessel away from that environment that's causing that fear. Shit's still going on, I promise you. And I'm not saying, you know, stay, stay willfully obtuse. Um, but it's important. We need all of us to be able to be strong and safe and secure and feel safe. And how is that possible if um, we're constantly reaching out for those things that do not make us feel safe? Consider it, okay? I feel like this is something that you can feel, though. The past, moving into where we are here now, Ten of Swords. So this is um, rock bottom, betrayal, painful endings, loss. This is, um, this I feel like is the curse the curse okay and this is where uh, we have the decision like i was saying earlier you guys we have the power to say nope i don't accept that <laughs> nope that doesn't apply to me as far as a curse goes we have to allow we have to consent to um anything really blessings or curses <laughs> but in this in this uh situation here the Ten of Swords is pain, and we can get addicted to that pain and stay there. There's a request with the Ten of Swords to get the hell out of here. There is nothing here but pain and grief. Break free from those chains. Allow yourself to step away from that. Whatever that is, like I said, it could be a fan. Well, our family is just this way, or, you know, all the men in our family, or all the women in our family, that kind of thing. Our words have power. Our belief has power. Remember that. Remember, Simba. Any other information here on the Ten of Swords, please, Spirit? Five of Cups, too. And the sun. The sun's coming coming out here. We do have the sun here in a little bit. Um, five of Cups. This is disappointment, regret, remorse. Tied to that Ten of Swords energy. To me, this is the most negative card in the deck. This energy will eat all hope from your experience. So connected to this idea of like the curse, if you are continuing to choose to believe in that, to accept that, to be a part of your reality, well, that is the poison here that is eating, eating all of the positivity away. There's a request to turn away from that. Okay, let's keep moving forward. So what's coming here in the near future for you guys? Nine of Cups. Hey! Wish granted. You guys, wish granted. This is personal satisfaction. Um, in stepping away, breaking those chains, not allowing something to be restrictive to you anymore. As far as like a curse, okay? A curse. A restriction. That's what a curse is. Somebody planting a suggestion to you of where they want you to be restricted or held captive. 
you feeling fearful over that and allowing that to take hold because of the fear. It's not magic, it's psychology, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I would even say, you know, the cure to a curse to spell. I'm not poo-pooing spell work or anything like that. Um, I will say, though, it is a lot of it is um, thought manipulation. It's manifestation. It's control through suggestion. And it can have positive effects, too. Like, if you feel like you need to do something to break a curse, um, by all means, go and, go and do that. But please understand that what you're doing in that process is allowing your own psychology to get the upper hand. You're creating a moment of safety for yourself to allow what had hold on you before to go. Do not continue to give your power away to people, please, you guys. You are so, so powerful. So in realizing that for yourself, wish granted comes through. You get to start living the life that you want to live away from the control that you've given to others. Mother of Wands in the world come through here. Yay. Nine of Pentacles on the bottom too. Personal abundance. I'd love to see that, you guys. Um, getting back to a place of feeling confident, secure. Along the lines of the curse and spell work, like I was saying too, uh, the Mother of Wands, she doesn't give a shit. In the standard Rider weight deck, she's got a black cat, and black cats are con it's the sh um, shadow side of Venus. It's considered bad luck. She doesn't give a shit. She has a black cat anyway. She does what she wants to do. She's like, oh, is that a curse? No, it's not. <laughs> it only is if I accept it to be, right? Right. So this is just a reminder here, um, and, and to be your own protection as well. Um, along the same lines as, I guess, like spell work, if you want to look at it that way, with protection, um, there is a need. We do need to protect ourselves. Don't get me wrong, you guys. Um, I'm not saying that other energies outside of us can't affect us, but if we're proactively creating situations like as a habit on a daily basis of reminding ourselves to remain protected, again, you're shifting your psychology to produce a resonance and an effect. So shift your focus towards your own power, okay? That's what's coming through the world, an end of a major cycle. Breaking of that curse. Get that curse the hell out of here, <laughs> whatever it is. Whether it's bad luck, poverty, you know, toxic relationships, whatever. Get it out of here. Bye-bye. So um, you in this situation, Six of Cups. This is um, nostalgia. Could be somebody from the past, your past self, your future self. Um, I feel like in this context, you, this is uh, pointing to all of you, all of your experience. In this third dimension, we see one frame at a time or we experience one frame at a time and we can't go back and we can't go forward. But from other dimensions, it exists all at the same time. You are your past. You are your future as well. They exist all at the same time <laughs> and every different possibility and form of that as well. So I feel like this is just a reminder again of your the magnitude of your experience and also your personal power. A gift from your previous self is something that comes through here. Maybe let's say like the curse, hmm, the curse is this um, to take yourself back to a time where maybe you weren't experiencing that. This is the gift, okay? To remember, this is a part of what can help you here in gathering your power back from the fringe. Remembering a time where that didn't have a hold on you, okay? And the point of that is to remind you that it's possible. And don't get me wrong, I've gotten lost in this kind of shit too, you guys. It's taken me time to realize uh, my own power as well. And I want you to realize that too. We are and can be so much more. Okay? 
Anything else here on the Six of Cups for Collective? Four of Cups here. Don't miss this opportunity to heal, to be you, to step into your true power. And the gift too, the gifts from your, we were talking about gifts that came through in, in the Crow Oracle. Something um, from the past, maybe, maybe you've had stronger connection to your own gifts when you were a kid is pretty typical. Um, what I'm getting from that is to not miss this opportunity here. Maybe that's the fringe to pull the fringe inside. This dam is going to break, go back in, go back to the path, pull your access to that back. Okay. So where this takes place, you have the sun it takes place on the sun. <laughs> What I get from this, this is um, happiness, positivity, joy, abundance. Um, I'm actually getting a divine masculine energy from the sun, divine feminine for the moon, uh, coming through as far as where this is taking place. It is taking place in the present moment. Your power is in your presence. And it is. Maybe you are, maybe you're spread thin here because of fear. So there are components of you where you're trying to re-experience something in the past or you're worrying about the future. And because of that, you're missing your power in the present moment. Fear, either way though, really. And that's where others are able to take power from us is when we're afraid, when we're not in our presence, in our power. Anything else here for the sun, please, spirit? Six of Cups. <laughs> Is there an echo in here? Echo, echo. Um, I am getting this like this request to um, allow, allow those gifts to come back from the past. It's not really like a process where you need to go and grab anything. It's accessible. What is preventing you from tapping into um, either what you've had before, you know, you've experienced something or you just haven't. It hasn't awoken yet. Um, what's stopping you from just allowing that to be is being present. Not being trapped in fear. Not being under control because somebody is trying to make you feel fear and you are allowing that. That inner child. Very important to... Um, the sun is about the inner child too. Six of Cups and the Sun are both about the inner child. And that's probably, okay, that's why that trickery energy was coming through. There is a need to play, you guys. If you're not playing, if fear is just like eating every moment of your life, you have the power to change how you are experiencing. It may not be a switch all the time. Sometimes it can be. But you're being asked to... Um, to choose something different. What was that, that about behavior? <clears throat> Your choice is in behavior. Um, and this is totally your choice. Are you choosing to go have fun? Are you choosing to bring moments of joy and positivity and abundance into your, into your life to break free from the fear? If not, now's time to start. Go do something that you really enjoyed when you were a little kid, okay? Start allowing those pieces from the fringe to come back. Getting out of your way is what I'm what I'm feeling, okay? That ego, the fear. That's what our ego is doing. <laughs> it's causing causing us to feel fear so that we stay safe. It's not um, super accurate. <laughs> But it helped us out a lot when we were in days of needing to survive, okay? And I know it can be argued that, you know, I'm still in a state of survival. And we are here to make the decision to shift that. It is not just going to change on its own. We have to make the choice to participate actively in our life and in the lives of others because we are all connected. Stop giving your power away. 
Stand up. Okay. Um, your hopes and fears here in this situation. Ace of Pentacles. What I'm getting is, like, you know, some of you, you are hoping for something new. New abundance, new opportunities here in the physical realm. I do also get this fear of lack of like, there's just nothing. There's, it's, it doesn't exist. That is a lie. It's a lie. And again, your choice is in your behavior. If that's how you want to view this, then whatever you believe is true. But this is a reminder that if you're not seeing opportunities that you desire, you want to start taking action to go find those. As an example, you want a new job. If somebody's not knocking on your door to offer you a job, get out there and start looking to see what's out there. Apply, apply to play. Get that energy set in motion in a positive direction. Anything else here on the Ace of Pentacles, please, Spirit? Justice. Balance. Fairness. There's the sun here again at the bottom. <laughs> um, I feel like this, for a lot of you, this is coming back down to childhood, your inner child. Judge and jury here with justice. Um, what you were programmed, you were taught to believe about the way the world works. Most of it comes from fear. And we're at a time now in our evolution where we're starting, we're starting to look at those things more deeply <clears throat> and break them apart. If it's not true, let's get it out of here. This requires that we look at it though. It requires that we go into the shadow. So both cats here, they're looking back at the um, querent here, I guess, or reader. And they're waiting, they're waiting for you to make a choice. It's your choice. Your choice is in your behavior. Okay, let's move forward here. As far as your final outcome, where all this leads. High Priestess. Hell yeah, it does. Um, so the subconscious realm. Inner knowledge being accessible because that knowledge exists outside of us and we have that ability to connect. The high priestess knows everything. She doesn't always share her secrets. And I feel like a lot of the time or sometimes she's not sharing those secrets because we're not, we're not looking for them or we're not asking them in the right way or we're coming at it with ego or fear. She will take you on this journey but you have to be ready for that journey. Just like the crow is saying here, that magical sight that the high priestess has here is available. But you have to be ready for it. So this is a big, this is a big shift. This is a big change. Moving more into our, well, divinity. Can we get some clarification there on the high priestess? Anything else? Spirit. Five of Pentacles. Yeah, finally. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I do feel like someone's pissed off about what I'm saying. Um, you can deal with that on your own. It's not my problem. Five of Pentacles, though. This is moving from where there has been lack, isolation. Moving in from out of the cold. You are ready for this move. It just requires... It just requires... It requires you to... Um, to approach your entire story. Are you ready to change? Are you ready for that change? Hmm? I think you are. I know you are. I know it's not going to be easy, but, um, well, I think it'll be easier than you think. I'm going to finish off here with a Blue Angel Oracle to close the reading. What do we have here, Spirit, for the collective? <laughs> yes! Yes, Wings of Light, you guys. Wings of Light is um, positive news. Positive news. Something so wonderful is about to come forward that you are going to be filled with such gratitude. And there's a reminder to express that gratitude for what is coming in. Your gifts, the um, succulent surprise, okay, that came through in meditation. 
something wonderful is coming. And I feel like it's, it could be a tangible thing for some, some of you, but I feel like in large S it's more, um, you are evolving. You're ascending. You are allowing that dam to break those chains to come off. That is a choice. And because you're making that choice over and over and over, this is your freedom. Stepping into your divinity. Okay? All right, you guys, I love you so much. Thank you for joining me here. I know these collective readings uh, tend to go a little bit longer, but I'm just going to stop saying anything about it. It is what it is. If this message was meant for you, or you, I mean, it's meant for all of us, if you are ready for this message, thank you for being open to receiving that. I know you can do this, okay? Every day is going to be a little bit different, so be patient with yourself. And as you're learning, this is coming through here with the mentor, as you're learning to, be sure to, um, to also share with others what you're learning. We're all walking each other home, as Rumi says. So let's keep schlepping, right? All right. I love you, Collective. Thank you guys for being here. Take care of yourself.